Hi everyone! It's been almost a year since I've posted on this channel, and I hope you'll forgive me for that because I've actually been writing a book this whole time, which is a fact I never really publicized, but now I can proudly say I am the author of Diversity and Exclusion, Confronting the Campus Free Speech Crisis. And now you can order it. Um, the link is in the description. It's available in paperback and ebook format on Amazon. Personally, I'm more of a fan of hard copies, so perhaps you'll, you'll get a paperback. In brief, this book is a tell-all about the Wilfrid Laurier University controversy of 2017 to 18. It chronicles from when I was applying to grad school and kind of all throughout my graduate school experience. So it is mostly a memoir, but it has elements of a nonfiction book um, about campus free speech as well. This book has been two and a half years in the making, almost three years in the making. Um, I started writing it in 2018, and I'll tell you how this book came to be. I was always told by many people to write a book, and I was always kind of like, yeah, maybe one day, eventually. Um, but a literary agent reached out to me in 2018 and told me I should write an account of the Laurier controversy. And at first, I think I told him, uh, no thanks, I'm not interested. But then a few weeks or a few months later, I said, actually, yeah, let's give it a shot. You know, why not? So I wrote a proposal for the book, which was going to be, again, a full account of the Laurier controversy. And we arranged meetings with Canada's publishing bigwigs in Toronto. So um, it was kind of just one meeting after the other kind of thing for one day. Uh, and I think in total, there were about five meetings where I just pitched my concept. So at this point, I only had a book proposal. I hadn't actually sat down and, and written the book yet. Uh, so then that was over. And a few weeks later, we started getting the responses from the meetings we had. And um, every publisher said no to this book. And I was pretty unsurprised by this. Um, I was hoping to be surprised. I was hoping that someone would unexpectedly say, yes, I want to do this book. But I was, in the end, just kind of left with what I thought would happen, which is that everyone was, I guess, too scared or, or too risk-averse to take on this book, or they just didn't want to do it. Uh, so at that point, I totally scrapped the idea of ever writing a book about the Laurier controversy. I thought, you know, there's, there's news articles out there, um, there are YouTube videos out there, whatever, that'll be enough, and um, I'm going to check out of doing this this project. I'm never going to do it. And then one day in 2019, I get a call from Candace Malcolm, who is the founder of True North, which is where I currently work. And she says, hey, have you ever thought about writing a book? And I told her, I told her the story. I told her, yeah, I have, but didn't really work out. Um, but then in October 2019, I sign on with True North and I get to work on a book. Um, I told Candace, I'm going to write a nonfiction book about free speech, open inquiry, and political correctness in Canada. So my thinking was, we have Madness of Crowds by Douglas Murray, The Diversity Delusion by Heather MacDonald, Cynical Theories by James Lindsay and Helen Pluckrose. But out of these books that analyze free speech and academia and other related topics, none of them focus on Canada. So that's where I saw my niche is I'm going to focus on Canada. I started writing a book about how diversity ideology manifests in Canadian society. And my, my boss, Candace, was like, cool, sounds good. Um, but when I was writing that book, I was kind of thinking to myself, how can I not bring up the Laurier controversy? Because most of my knowledge and insight about free expression and about open inquiry and diversity ideology, it stems from that direct experience. And I kind of felt the urge to, to reference it. And at this point, I was about probably 50 pages into the book, something like that. So I figured I'll make the introduction of my book uh, just a summary of, of the Laurier controversy. I'll talk about, uh, you know, what happened to me and why I'm interested in these issues as a consequence and why I decided to write this book. But then it became clear that the Laurier controversy was way too complex to be summed up in an introduction. And so I went back to Candace, my boss, and I said, actually, my book will be a two-part book. So in the first part, I'm going to write an account of the Laurier controversy. And in the second part, I will do a nonfiction informational analysis of free speech in Canada. But alas, by the time I had written the Laurier controversy down on, on Microsoft Word, 
I had an entire 70,000 word book. So uh, I think Candace knew all along that this was kind of the book that was meant to be written. And it was. So um, I have no mainstream publisher. The book is a project that's being released by True North Center for Public Policy, my employer. Um, technically, it's self-published, although it doesn't really necessarily feel that way because um, my, my Candace and Andrew Lawton at True North edited my book, helped me edit it. And um, because I don't have a mainstream publisher, I was I think it's better that way. And I was kind of skeptical about the like publishing through Amazon thing. I thought, you know, there's there's not much prestige that comes with this. But I don't know, I, I kind of changed my mind because in, in my book in particular, I have to name names. I have to reveal details that a mainstream publisher undoubtedly would have censored or cut out. So I think back to 2018 when I had the opportunity to write this book. Um, and I don't think I was ready back then. And I think on some level, I kind of knew that. But a couple years later, I'm, I'm definitely ready to be publishing this book. And I'm, I'm happy that it's all on paper. When I was writing, um, I think this book will appeal to anyone, any age, any background, but when I was writing, I was guided by the idea of writing for someone who was going through a controversy similar to the one I was going through. Because I describe in the book, there were many times in my graduate school career when I was in search of solace, and I was looking for resources and looking for experiences to relate to. And in terms of books, there wasn't a whole lot out there really. So I hope my book can be there for people who find themselves in that position, as well as people who are just interested in these these issues. Another one of my principles while I was writing this book is to not be propagandistic at all and to not be pushing any kind of agenda. Um, and because I didn't have a mainstream publisher, I had a lot of freedom to, to structure the book how I wanted to. So I didn't have to hammer any kind of political point. I didn't have to censor. I didn't have to sugarcoat anything. Um, I just wrote down what happened. I wrote it with that kind of insider knowledge that I think is going to be quite compelling to people. And um, the book also serves as a documentation of events unfolding. So I work in actual letters and documents that were circulating during the controversy because part of why I wanted to write this book was to have that documentation. You know, because I didn't have an external publisher, the book, cover to cover, you know, every decision was pretty much mine. And um, so I think it's a good read. I think I got to make it pretty fun. It, it's good to have books that theorize about free speech and, and diversity ideology uh, and, and postmodernism and how it's infiltrating the academy. So, you know, books like the ones I already talked about, Cynical Theories, Diversity, Delusion, Madness of Crowds. But my book is a first-person account because whereas those books analyze political correctness and, and free speech and stuff like that, I lived these issues. They were my reality. And now that story of the Laurier controversy is immortalized. So overall, I think um, the best way to describe this book is that it is truly uncensored. So I hope you'll order it. I also really hope that you'll review it if you read it. I'm really looking forward to reading the reviews. I plan on reading all of them. So uh, again, link is below and I'm so excited to see how you guys respond to it. And um, I'm sure I'll be talking a little more about it in the future. So until then, thanks so much for watching and please read my new book, Diversity and Exclusion.